Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the NEC Classic Motor Show. We are here currently admiring a full lineup of Opal GTs with the roll around headlamps and not pop ups. Look at this one, beautiful sort of candy red color. So, um, we're going to try and have a gentle walk around the show. The live report was uh, a little shaky, a little rushed because we had very, very little time to do it. But uh, yeah, so many wonderful cars here. Mark II Cavalier with a back flash. Transit van Mark One, beautiful Cavaliers here. Uh, I think we rushed down that lineup in my live report, but we're going to go back um, over here to look at the Retro Power Project Utah. Good morning. It's furious driving. We're both doing the same thing, people, uh, because yeah, it's just an extraordinary car. So this is Project Utah. Uh, causing some controversy when I posted a photo of this on uh, Facebook yesterday, now everyone's loving it, but there is so much detailed work going into this car. Even the grille and those little grills either side of it have been remade. The front end's been remodeled with no bumpers. Wonderful interior on it. Go to the Retro Power YouTube channel and they've got a full series on how this car came together. It is a work of absolute art. So do check it out. You can hear the sporting bears are starting to arrive in the background over there so uh, we'll see what's going on over there but uh, i'm really keen to find the toyota enthusiast stand uh, there it is i found it i completely missed it yesterday and i'm rather ashamed about that boston classic car club very nice um, ford cortina mark III, and a worsley 1550 very nice uh, love a mini clubman I must say, look, we've even got a Vectra C here. And I like that. You know, it, it isn't an exclusive event. It's a modern classic, and uh, it's great to see it here. Yeah, Toyota Enthusiast stand. I think this is a yeah, Toyota Corona. Exceedingly rare cars. And uh, I'm not sure I've ever seen one of these in the metal. I probably have a Japan Classic Sunday, to be fair. But yeah, Corona and Mark II became two separate models eventually. But yeah, it's very delightful. This Toyota Corolla three door. Sold as a five door in some markets, but not in the UK. And uh, one of the many cars assembled in New Zealand and Australia. And a brown Toyota Celica ST Mark I. Lovely. And a Celica Supra. Very nice. And uh, Datsun 240s. We came and had a look yesterday because my friend Jane's 240G is here with its... Um, aerodynamic snout that's one of the things that makes that so special but uh yeah this one's a beauty as well on a j plate must be about a 72 and uh, yeah they're just lovely cars aren't they um stephanie of iDriver classic um drove a 240z quite recently and uh, we've got uh, the honda s800 so i did have a look around let's have another look they're just dinky tiny little cars so wonderful right um let's go, go and find some of the key cars for me in hall five Vauxhall senator b an absolute favorite of mine little headlamp wipers this one beautiful metallic red color really nice i did a video on one of those earlier this year it wasn't the prime example i drove it was a very hub nut car that one looks absolutely beautiful carlton gsi 3000 effectively the same structure um slightly shorter i think these are on a longer wheelbase but a very different front end. Really nice. And the, is it a Vauxhall Viceroy estate? It is. Uh, it says shooting brake. Wow. This was built for the Queen. Uh, sadly, um, parting with us this year, Her Majesty. Uh, but yeah, lovely collection of vehicles. I think we saw some of these. But I think these deserve a high res look, don't you? Vauxhall Cresters. So many of them are pink, but yeah, I really like this classy two tone. That's really, really nice. And uh, people were asking for a, a closer look at the Vauxhall Cavalier Calibre. So here we are, taking a closer look. I'm loving the period accessories, people. The mobile phone, the cassettes. Now that's what I call music. Yeah, crazy body kit on them. Two litre fuel injection. Opal Cadet, I was chatting to the owner of this yesterday. Um, Croatian viewers may recognize the number plate. This has come from Croatia. I had a chat with a chap last year and he says, I think I'm going to buy an Opel Cadet in Croatia. It's kind of inspired by our Mighty Dacia adventures, I think. 
and this is the result he did he bought it in that's really nice to see this is chevettes and cadets because obviously the chevettes and cadets were all on the same platform but these all look like cadets to me they are they're all cadets so really weird how things worked back in the day but in the uk you could buy an opal cadet or you could buy the very very similar Vauxhall chevette but the opals had opal engines and the Vauxhall chevettes had um uh, Vauxhall engines so uh, quite different vehicles and also obviously Isuzu Geminis in other parts of the world I think they were sold as Chevrolets possibly elsewhere as well South America I think they were sold quite a lot in so yeah the, the model history gets quite confusing I'm gonna go and have a wonder over this way because I don't think we explored this way yesterday we had a quick look at the Mokes as we ran past and this twinny mini with two engines in it that's a lovely array and of course we've got the modern minis as well they are now over 20 years old. Um, must be getting on for, is it 21 this year for the, the modern minis? I think it is. Uh, Triumph Dolomites, this fantastic waterfall grill. A reminder that before the Second World War, Triumph really was a luxury brand. More Rover 800s, we've got 600 just peeking in over there as well. We've got a 400 HHR over here too which is the follow-up to the um, R8. So this was uh, a Honda D Domini or Domini um, that was modified by Rover to become this car. Um, also, Honda did a version called the Civic, uh, built at the Swindon plant here in the UK. Uh, 420 GSI is quite high specs, got leather seats. Really nice car and I used to have one and uh, it had the 1.4K series, would do 45 to the gallon all day and really really comfortable ride and at the same time rover developed that they developed the r3 here the rover 200 which is a combination it's the front end of the rover 200 r8 but the back end is much closer to a maestro and it was kind of they tried to make it a luxurious super mini but it was always a bit big for the super mini class bit of an odd one so this rover 200 Com tomcat is a bit of a famous car it's set a number of performance records look at that 5,000 kilometers, averaging 139 miles an hour from a standing start. So uh, the turbocharged 200s were, um, yeah, they were flying machines. They went very quickly indeed. Uh, Mark II Jaguar, it's a late one. It's got the narrow austerity bumpers because Jaguar had a bit of a confusing range. They had the S-type, they had um, the 420, so the uh, Mark II became the entry level Jaguar, so they cheapened it down a bit. Uh, Slimline bumpers, which I really like the look of, especially on the back. The seats um, were generally no longer leather, it was sort of ambler, fake leather instead. I believe on the 340, you could specify leather. Uh, but this one's a 240. If you watch uh, Matt's video of us driving here, we, we encountered this Rover P6 in glorious tobacco leaf along the way so here it is it's in the show we're merely having to park outside so uh yeah we'll uh, carry on our walk triumph 2000s lovely lovely cars really mean looking dolomite look at that and uh, i don't know if this is an original leyland rally car or a very good replica but i like it very much either way lovely tony pond legendary bl rally driver this is a Toledo which is when the front wheel drive 1300 here very confusing lineup this is bear, bear with me the 1300 came first front wheel drive very weak input shafts ask Steph I drive a classic she knows all about those and in 1970 they reworked it to be rear wheel drive to replace the Triumph Herald and uh, I mean there were all sorts of the input shaft is just one of the issues with those cars uh, so this is a much more simple bottom of the range and then they developed it again to become the Dolomite with a range of much larger engines so the 1850 overhead cam engine and uh, I think they put the 1500 engine in as well uh, which was an overhead valve so uh, yeah it's a fascinating development history a car that started front wheel drive became rear wheel drive and I think someone built a, a four wheel drive version because all the bits were there to do so. They've got Rover 200 BRMs with their pimping leather interiors. 
well like this one with the clear indicator lenses that's a modification and uh, we've got transport six club here with all their spin-offs of the small chassis triumphs so we've got the vitesse the herald represented by the courier van there spitfires lovely things over here the uh, rover 75s and mgzts gorgeous copper leaf there look at the color of that i don't even know what color that is but it's utterly magnificent Blue. did it say what color that is monogram lagoon beautiful and then this is another lovely color as well uh, let's find out what color this one is wedgwood blue very nice so these are the mg sv x powers um, very impressive machines we had a quick peek under the bonnet of one um, in yesterday's live report very rare cars so impressive to see four of them and know there are even more of them in the show so this is the um, Z Club, specifically for the um, MG versions of these latter-day Rovers. Got the Rover 25 became the MG ZR. The uh, 45 became the MG ZS, available with a two and a half liter V6 engine. That looks like that same monogram Lagoon, doesn't it? Stunning color. And then the uh, 75 became the ZT. So in 2005, when this car was built, uh, Rover sadly went to the wall and the rights were bought up by a Chinese manufacturer and uh, the mg brand is still alive and well in china and the mg6 magnet for this is the saloon version was the first car to come back to the uk after that um, acquisition so it's interesting to see one here it's only 10 years old of course but the magnet is a, a famous name uh, in mg um, circles so uh, yeah it's, it's, it's i think it's good to see one here it's a, a very different company in so many ways, but then that's true of every company. Is Citroen the same company it was in the 1920s, the 1950s? It isn't. Things change, and although, you know, some people are sad to see that production has moved over to China, the brand is still alive, and I'm glad the MG Car Club embraces that modern era, as well as the, you know, classic earlier magnets. I think there was a magnet name used before the Second World War, but um, these ZAs and ZBs were um, perhaps the prettiest. Let's find out which one this one is. This is a ZA. So that's the first of the post-war magnets. And a really nice car. A little B-series engine. Uh, twin car Berettas. Yeah, and of course, the magic of the octagon. Now, although there are some areas of the show I am going to replicate in this from the live stream purely because I want to look at the interesting vehicles, I'm going to generally try and stay to stuff that didn't make it in, like this Fiat 1500 Spider. Isn't that a pretty little car? Uh, this is on the um, Maynard engines stand. So do area, various engine rebuilds. And look at this Rally Spec Larder. Yes, lovely. Yeah, even the back end. So very, very pretty on the Fiat 5 1500. Now, if you come to the show, do make time to check out the smaller side stands for the trade stands here. Look, you can you can play with a Spax damper here and experience the um, absorbance of oomph. That's a technical phrase, that is, people. Amusingly, my Invercar has Spax dampers. I wonder if Spax still have the specs. Could I order brand new Spax dampers for my Invercar? Maybe I'll come back when they're here and ask them. But uh, we've got... Um, Flannery speedometer repair here as well. I'm not, I'm, Sadi isn't here. But I'll, uh, it's so difficult to try and catch people when the show's open. I'll be stuck on the stand. But uh, he does amazing work. I follow him on Twitter. So um, yeah, do check him out. Does great things. Uh, plating companies, so you can see the different plating finishes, di different stages of the plating process. It's all manner of good stuff going on uh, wherever you look, really. Someone mentioned um, on the Facebook or Twitter, I think it was, that they saw the um, Jones van from Dad's Army coming into the show on a trailer, sadly. But then, <laughs> would you really want to drive it? It's a little austere. But the BBC did actually own this van for quite a long time, so it was used for the filming of Dad's Army. It had no value then. Utterly um, worthless, really. But no, worth a great deal. But uh, look at this mighty Mark 10 Jaguar. I love the look of this. Oh, let's go racing. So one of the things I love about this show is going on Facebook and Twitter and seeing photos of bits of the show I haven't seen at all yet. 
and uh, you can recognize it by banners you see around you can kind of find out where cars are you want to see like the historic marathon rally group display here we've got a, a nice um, early hillman hunter uh, apparently this took part in london mexico rally in 1990 sorry 1970 duh and uh, yeah i think uh, actually won not this example but uh, a hunter won the rally of 1968 although the leading ds did get taken out quite near the end of that rally but interesting touches like if your windscreen wipers fail have a backup love that that's how much we trusted british windscreen wiper motors back then but you know we got um uh, this is a recreation escort fev 1h was the original rally car fully restored won the 1995 rerun of the london mexico rally yeah so it's been built up as a replica of the original rally car by ford themselves i think and is still part of the ford heritage collection so uh it's fascinating the history of these vehicles a little mini here uh it was an original british leyland car to do the london mexico world cup rally can you imagine london to mexico in a mini even if it's got the bigger front end on it of the clubman and uh, this is quite a famous car as well. This is the winner of the Monte Carlo Rally in 1953, uh, driven by Morris Gatsonides, which is the, where the Gatso camera name comes from. Morris Gatsonides was the inventor of the speed camera because he was trying to work out how fast these cars could go. Um, I don't know if that was to do with cornering, so you could try and work out um, how they were doing, but yeah, wonderful. So that is some fascinating history right there. This is a Nash Healy. Uh, Nash Healy's became a staple of the Healy company, Nash powered Healy's, but apparently this was a car that kind of began that. And then another World Cup rally car here, London to Mexico City, Ford Capri. Wow. I love that these cars survive and I love that so many of them are still used today as well. Puff the Magic Wagon, the, the Maxi uh, is part of this group and still competes um, with Bron, who drove it many years ago. I think we had a chat with her at the March show when we were here at the NEC. Metro 6R4. Oh, aren't they just incredible? With a sort of mid-mounted V6 engine in the back. 6R4 net is the website dedicated to those. Yeah, lots to see. Look, little Unipowers. Three Unipowers. Remarkable little cars, mini-based. Uh, but So it's got the front end of a Mini in the back. So instant sort of mid-mounted engine. Great cars. DeLoreans, we've got several DeLoreans here because of course we have, but we've got more rallying here. Rallying history, uh, this one is. Look at that Nissan Skyline, I, I believe. Is it Skyline? Or was it just sold as a 240 RS? I forget. Uh, but yeah, Rally Skoda Favorite, Sierras, Celicas, wonderful. Uh, the Gordon Keebles, one of my favorites absolute beauty of a car and I'm, not, I'm glad one's here because i want to go and have a look at the rear lights so i'm wondering if those are the same rear lights as that pretty little fiat 1500 spider and i think they might be these are not the e-type jaguars you were looking for these are challengers which are uh, they use jaguar mechanicals i believe but in a fiberglass body to look like an e-type jaguar and uh pretty convincing i must say there is not much to give the game away at all Lots of lovely details, correct on those, very nice. Uh, over here, we've got uh, Discoveries. So there's a G-WAC. These are sort of the um, pre-production cars or press cars um, from 1989. I just love these early Discoveries with the side graphics. Has it got the sonar blue interior? It has. Yummers. Yeah, I like that. So known as Project J's, because these are, um, let's, let's see, this was used as a demonstration vehicle at the launch, along with 85 other discoveries. So yeah, uh, they're trying to find all the G-Wax, which must be quite a mission. It's a later one, but this is a, a van, which were built by um, SVO, Special Vehicle Operations at um, Load Lane. Not very far away from here, in fact. It's probably um, under 10 miles away from here is where these cars were built. And I just still love them, even though I had the Discovery and it was one of the most unreliable cars I've ever owned. Um, but yeah, marvellous. And this one's got the funky side graphics with a compass logo on it. That's what mine had. I would still like one. 
Uh, look at this battered series one, that's seen plenty of action. And this is what I like, have the shiny, but also have you know the, the realistic, the, the weathered as well. It's wonderful to see the comparison. Uh, the Daimler Lancaster Owners Club stand. I've got some um, interesting vehicles here. This looks like a ferret convertible, which is a bit weird. What is it? It's a Dingo Scout car. Okay. So it's got the fluid flywheel pre-select gearbox, just like the road cars. The Daimler Darts. Never know, owned Dart because um, some other company, Dodge, said we already use Dart, so they just called them SP250s instead. Heard one coming into the show this morning. Uh, it's got a two and a half litre V8 engine, although apparently the larger four and a half litre can be made to fit for extra excitement. I will always seek out a Jowett Javelin now, beautiful cars. I'm still desperate to drive one. I spoke to the club last year, but uh, sadly I haven't managed to get to the stage of actually driving a Jowett Javelin. I really want to. It's got a flat four engine, which is very unusual, independent front suspension, a delicious little column gear change. Really fascinating cars, very sort of swoopy and aerodynamic and uh, built in Bradford up in Yorkshire but sadly kind of killed off as the motor industry grew and bodybuilders got absorbed um, I think was it Briggs yeah that, that company um, was bought out by Ford and Jowett suddenly found itself without a body supplier they did try buying as many bodies as they could they were stacking them up at the factory but uh, yeah no dice unfortunately and uh, by the mid 50s it was all over it was crying shame uh, this is a Bradford Utility, an early estate car, if you will. Rear seat, rear windows. This is the Berlingo Multispass of its day, with a little flat twin engine. These are not Reliant Scimitars. These are Middlebridge Scimitars. Who, Middlebridge was a company that bought the rights to them. I think they only built about 77, uh, if I remember rightly. But it is said that um, Princess Anne still owns a Middlebridge Scimitar. Everyone goes on about the Reliance Cemetery she used to own, but I believe she actually still owns one. Yep. Right, this is the Lancaster Insurance Pride of Ownership uh, display, where, where they've picked some amazing cars. It's a Ginetta G33 with a 3.9 litre Rover V8, uh, BMW Bauer convertible. This absolutely mint 1981 Ford Fiesta Mark I. That's a lovely thing. Well, three and a half thousand miles from new. Uh, so yeah, th th we'll be picking a winner in this class. Uh, Trying for test there, Vauxhall Nova GSI, and delighted to see this David Roberts Nissan Cherry Europe. I think we saw this at Festival of the Unexceptional. A lovely car, um, Aston Martin uh, DBS V8 with the um, Cortina indicator unit. It's a big slab of car that is. Got a little mini. We've got a fresh and minty's Honda Acti over here, which is an incredible machine. I don't think I've ever looked in the back of it. Oh, wow. It's a world of retro gaming. Marvellous. And he's even got his BMX. And, uh, yeah, apparently it's still got the original 550cc engine in it. So he's um, gone for the looks, but uh, hasn't um, carried out um, any mechanical improvement. But, uh, yeah, really, really nice to see it. It's lovely little details all the back. Look at the rear lights, little strip LEDs in the back. Tiny little lights to make the number plate legal. Lovely. Uh, Bentley Turbo R. Magnificent. Clear indicators are a mod from standard, I believe. A TVR Grantura. Look how tiny it is. Wow. And they still managed to cram their chairs in there. That's impressive. Uh, we've got a rebuilt um, Chevrolet Bel Air here. That's really, really nice. Incidentally, the Ginetta G33 uh, uses Chevette rear lights. Nice. Uh, it looks like a little Austin of some sort. But it's an early post-war, I'm going to say. Oh, just pre-war, in fact. It's an Austin 10 Cambridge from 1938. That's lovely. Got a Gilburn GT representing Wales. A uh, Gilburn GT um, built in South Wales. Uh, I still need to drive a Gilburn. Lotus Alam Plus 2, a little pop up headlamps, a Ford Escort RS2000 with a droop snoot, Rolls Royce Silver Cloud. A very nice MGB here, but uh, one of the stars for me of this stand, this Heather Pink Jaguar XJC. 
It's a very rare colour, heather pink, and uh, I sadly feel for many Jaguars painted that colour were um, repainted. Oh no, it's a one-off colour. Champagne pink. Oh wow, okay, my mistake. Wow. I was thinking that's actually quite a potent colour. But uh, yeah, pink, not very popular. A lot of pink cars have been repainted since. And we've got um, more Ginettas over there, including another G33. It's great to see. We've got lots of Lotuses here as well, variously. Original Elans, the Elite, which is like a, a GT, the uh, XL. Uh, I saw some XLs coming into the car park this morning, in fact. This is Canacan District Car Club, uh, little performance cars used for rallying and autocrosses, no doubt. That's great. Oh, hello. What is this? This is Doctor Who's Bessie. Ah, okay. They think this may have been used in Doctor Who. They can't confirm it. It's, uh, on Ford running gear, uh, I believe. But this is uh, the Panther stand. And uh, we'll have to come back and look at Panthers another time, I think. Triple wipers on the J72, a sort of Jaguar SS100 replica that sort of fitted around Jaguar running gear, I believe. Uh, is it Robert Jankel uh, who ran Panther? Yeah, it was. This is the J99, the Unfinished Symph Symphony. Oh, so Robert bought back the Panther name in 1999 and was hoping this was gonna turn into the next model. Oh. It never happened. That's a shame. Right, uh, lots of fancy cars for sale. Very, very fancy cars in places. Look at those. Nice fleet of Rolls Royces. Yeah, it's quite a collection going on. £475,000. I'll take two. Look at this colourful display of um, MGs here, though. An early MGA and an MGB. It's a lovely display. Next to an MGC, we've got Evolution of the um, MGs going on, right up to the V8s. MG RV8, which is their attempt to bring back right. the MG name in the early 1990s by using a modified brand new MGB body shell, um, fitting a much more up-to-date V8 engine and leather interior and everything. This is wood coat green, so many of them were. Lovely, and if we drop down to the front, we can see it has not fog lights, but intakes for an air conditioning system which tells me that was a japanese market one <laughs> why do i know this stuff it's an interesting sort of modern-ish speedster a retro mod it's got modern wipers on it i'm not sure how i feel about that that's rather peculiar and uh yeah one of the prettiest cars in show without shadow of a doubt the lamborghini Miura. one of very few cars to actually have eyelashes designed by marcello gandini who also did the citroen bx so this display is Paddock Life magazine. They tell me their signage has all been lost by DPD. Oh dear. Um, but uh, obviously we're here at Lamborghini Countach, not a very um, uh, hubnut car. But then you look at the windscreen wiper. Yes, that is two blades on one double arm. Intriguing and magnificent. So um, yeah, do check them out. Paddock Life. Oh, hello. Just walking through the um, uh, cars for sale section. Just spotted this absolutely delicious little metro city 3200 miles from new for sale with kim cairns classic cars wow that is um a one-off that is absolutely delightful look absolutely untouched it's brown in there people check out the brown oh look at that that is um, a delicious little car Austin 72 seater coupe believed unique. That's a, an interesting bit of style. I'm loving the structural gaffer tape. Lovely. How on earth I missed this stand yesterday, I will never know. This is Andy Saunders, uh, famous for doing many, many modified cars over the years. It is hard to describe how amazing this paint is. I think it's tripping out my camera slightly. Um, yeah, there's lace work in there, there's flake. It's a quite remarkable thing. And uh, I don't even know what this is, but it started life as that. So it was a Riley RM. Wow. And now it looks like a Delahaye. 
at um, quite extraordinary. Uh, they are cheering themselves in Silverstone auctions. I presume they're having a nice time. Modified cord. Wow. This was a right-hand drive cord 812 Westchester Ford up door sedan. There is one here in the show. I will try and find it. Extraordinary. This man is very, very skilled indeed. I think he built the Picasso 2CV, which I don't like at all. But uh, yeah, that thing is just breathtakingly beautiful. Right, I think this is the register of unusual microcars or national microcar rally team. This is a Lamar monocar. And uh, yeah, that's uh, very narrow, very narrow indeed. And uh, what would the mechanical makeup have been? It had a BSA one cylinder, four stroke, 246 engine. Wow, that's uh, terrifying. Top speed, only 35 miles an hour. Um, yeah, that, that, that's, that's plenty. I've also got a Noble here, uh, sold as a Fuldermobile in some countries. PLP 50, of course, it is for sale, apparently. Uh, I was chatting to the chap who runs PL Engineering just yesterday, Gary Hillman. Uh, ooh, a Barclay with a triple cylinder engine. Oh yes, please. And uh, a Bond mini car over here. But yeah, um, Gary who owns PL Engineering, uh, late break show, visited his house and it was amazing. Do recommend you go and check it out. So this deserves a closer look, especially as they've just dropped the um, rope for us. The uh, Bertone Stratos Zero uh, concept car, which I think appeared in a Michael Jackson music video. I think it uses full via running gear, if I remember rightly. I could be wrong. It's an amazing bit of kit. I think. Uh, Tony Harrison, a very noted photographer and Lancia owner, is taking photos of the car with the string down, which is why we were able to get in and have a closer look. Now, I did get in slight trouble yesterday for I was so distracted by things like this glorious Renault 7 um, here on the um, Renault Classic Car Club and uh, a Renault Owners Club. I think it's a joint stand celebrating um, the anniversary of the Renault 5. I completely ignored the Peugeots. So Peugeot 205 GTI, a 405 MI16 Le Mans. That's got a 16 valve engine, cracking engine. 404, we know how good the 404 is. Uh, again, there's the uh, Alpine we've seen tested on the channel. A lovely 306 XSI and a 104 ZS. So this is the car that would also be badged as a Talbot Samba, a Citroen LN and LNA and uh, it sort of came in two lengths this is the shorter of the two and initially looks like a super mini but it came, first came out it came out as a saloon with a fixed rear window the hatchback came a little later the zs was the sportiest version of that and tucked right down here in the corner we've got the club peugeot sport um, stand <laughs> look at this wide body um, uh, it's a replica of the 306 maxi rally cars uh, we've got a 405 MI16 again. Uh, it's owned by Darren, who I think is involved with Coventry Motorfest. And a 309 GTI, lovely blue. It's a very nice car, very underrated. To, to those who know, a better car than the 205, in all honesty. But here is a 205 CTI, the convertible version. So they're tucked away here in the corner of Hall 2. Capri Brooklyn's there, a taxi and a transit van, all in the um, Silverstone auctions. Be interesting to see what some of these things go for. Apparently there have been some very high prices paid. So I'll uh, leave you. I'm gonna to end today's report. We'll do hall one um, very shortly with the um, wonderful wipers of the Renault Alpine.